Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking shatter text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we're going to need here is a new composition. So I'm just going to go and run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS, at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new text layer and I'm just going to call this uh, Shatter. And the font that I'm using is called Mission Gothic. So you can find the links in the description. And I've just played around with some of these settings down here. I've just made it all caps and I played around with some of the spacing um, between the characters. So I'm going to leave it something like that. Once you're happy with your text, then you need to align it to the center of your composition by going and finding the align tools. And if you don't see it, it will be in window align. So once we have our text, the next thing that we need to do is we need to pre-compose that. So I'm just going to right click and go pre-compose. I'm just going to call that text. Make sure you move all attributes. And now we have a pre-comp with that text in there. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a solid. And this solid, I'm just going to be calling it fractal. And don't worry about the color because what we are going to do is we are going to be searching for the effect called fractal noise. So inside of this effect, what we need to do is I'm just going to change the noise type to block. Now feel free to experiment with this because what you do in here really affects the shadow of the text. And once I've got that, then the next thing that I need to do is I need to add another new effect, which is called Colorama. And Colorama gives you this real crazy kind of blue green, you know, kind of output. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the output cycles and we're just going to move these colors a little bit closer towards the edge, something like that. Maybe I'll even put red on this side and I'm just going to click and add a black in there. So you can again play around with some of these colors because again, what happens with this, you know, will really affect the shutter as well. So once we have that, the next effect that we need to put in here is turbulent displace. Now again, you can play around with some of these settings, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the size down to 15 and the amount, I'm going to bump it up to about 200. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that eye off because we don't need it. I'm going to go back to our text pre-comp and I'm going to look for the shatter effect. So once we have the shatter effect on here, the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the view to rendered. All right, and you can see what's happening here. It's looking pretty cool, but we are going to make it a little bit better. So we're going to go and open up the shape settings. We're going to change the custom or we're going to change the pattern to custom. We're going to change the shutter map to fractal and we're going to change it to effects and masks. Now you can see exactly what's happening here. So now we're using that fractal noise uh, map to create that shutter and that's looking pretty cool, but we're going to change a few things in there. So to go back into our shutter effect, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the extrusion depth. I'm going to set that back down to zero. The repetitions, I'm also going to drop that down to let's say one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the physics area over here and I'm going to change a few things. So the first one I'm going to change is the rotation speed. So I'm going to drop that to 0.5. Mass variance, I'm going to drop to about 5% as well as the gravity, I'm going to drop to 0.2. Now, again, you can play around with some of these settings and, you know, you can choose whatever settings you like, but they're, they're ones that I feel like, you know, look pretty decent. The other thing that I'm going to change is the gravity direction. So I'm going to bring that up to about, let's say, 28. So now once we've changed the gravity direction, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the force setting. So I'm going to open up force one. And if you like it to shatter from the middle, just like that, you can leave it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that position and I'm just going to start it maybe up here. So th this is what I did in the 
you know, in the video. Now you can see what, what's happening there. So it doesn't quite shatter everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate the radius. So I'm gonna set the radius down to let's say 0.1. I'm gonna hit that stopwatch. I'm gonna move forward in time, let's say about four seconds. And then I'm just gonna increase that uh, radius until it's all gone. And so now if we preview that, now you can see that it shatters with all the particles moving up because that's where our gravity is kind of taking it. So I'm gonna change a few of the options in here. So the first option is the depth. I'm gonna change that to 0.4. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the strength as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press U to bring up my keyframes. And I'm just gonna play around with some of these settings just so that it kind of goes with the time. So maybe if I bring it down to about three seconds, now you can see it shatters and it keeps on shattering. So maybe we'll even have to drop it to about two seconds. So that looks a little bit better and that kind of keeps the time of the shatter. So it kind of goes through all those characters. So that's looking pretty cool. Now all we need to do is just dress it up. So the final thing that we can do here is we can highlight both those layers and then if we go to layer pre-compose and we'll just call this uh, final. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a new solid and call it uh, BG for the background. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for an effect called a gradient ramp. Now, once I have that, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to color hunt and I'm gonna be picking this color theme. So I'm gonna pick that color and I'm just gonna replace the white over here and I'm gonna change it to a radial ramp and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start the ramp in the middle and then I'm gonna put the end of the ramp over here just so we kind of have a vignette effect. And so now we've got, you know, a bit of purple in the middle and it goes to kind of black on the sides, which looks pretty cool. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna add an effect on here called uh, pixel motion blur. And so this will now help with that motion blur of the shatter so i think that looks pretty cool but we're just going to change the vector detail maybe i'll bump it up to about 60. so now we have that effect in there and if you want more motion blur you can always uh check that box as well so that looks pretty cool the only other things uh that i did on this i added a adjustment layer and inside the adjustment layer i just added some curves so i quickly added a slight S bend, which will look uh, something like that. Uh, I also added another adjustment layer and I added some noise on here. So I bumped the noise up to let's say about 10%. And going back, I did add a few other things. So for example, the, the text has a bit of a gradient. So if I go back into my text layer over here and what you can do is you can just add a very simple gradient on this. So if I just write gradient ramp, and then if I just change the points of the ramp, so we'll just bring the white uh, point up slightly, just like probably about there. And so now if you go back to your final composition, now it has a little bit of a gradient. And once you've done that, that's pretty much it. If you want to add any other effects, you know, go for it. But that's how you do a simple shatter effect using Fractal Noise and the Shatter plugin. So anyways, guys, uh, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.